Welcome to MapleStory Worlds, home to custom-made experiences by fans just like you. The MapleStory Maker Engine opens up access to over 30 million MapleStory assets and the creative tools necessary to make bringing your ideas to life as simple and streamlined as possible. Our Maker tool comes equipped with two editing modes, Design Mode and Pro Mode. Design Mode is our no-code editor that allows you to easily drag and drop preset assets with built-in behaviors so that you can focus on your creativity and leave the difficult details to us. Pro Mode, on the other hand, allows for full control and freedom over your world provided that you're able to program the world on your own. This series will focus on design mode and aims to equip you with the basic knowledge necessary to start diving in and letting your creative juices flow in as little time as possible. To create our first project, let's first launch MapleStory Worlds. Upon launch, you'll be greeted by our home screen, which contains several curated lists of worlds for you to play. We want to create our own world, so let's click on the Create tab. And creators can choose either to create worlds for players to explore, or avatar items for their characters. For this tutorial, we'll select the Create New in the World tab. Before you can create a world, you can either begin from scratch, or select one of the preset templates provided for you as a starting point. There are two categories of templates, one for the Pro mode as you currently see on screen, or the Design Mode templates, which can be found by clicking on the Design tab. From the Design tab, we see several templates to choose from for Design Mode, but for this tutorial, let's select the first platformer option. Welcome to Design Mode! We can already see several familiar assets from MapleStory Hennessy's set up for you in this world. Let's first jump in by clicking on the Play button in the top right corner and see how the template has been set up for us. We'll be prompted to name our world, Let's name ours My First World and click OK. This is the waiting room. It's the room where players can hang out and socialize with each other until they're ready to enter the game. We'll see how the waiting rooms and the game rooms are set up, but first let's explore a few elements of the waiting room. We're greeted by Maya and Pink Bean NPCs as well as a small house at the top. Walking a bit to the left, we can see a jumping platform moving up and down. And if we walk to the right side of the world, we can see the same jumping platform, but staying stationary with a slightly offset orientation. We also see another jumping platform, but of a different type. Each of these assets have different settings that have been adjusted to behave in the way that they do. And the goal of this lesson is to give you familiarity of the different settings available in design mode. Let's explore a bit further by clicking on Join. After a short load, we're now in the game map. The goal of this game mode is to reach the end of the obstacle course. This big border in white we see surrounding our character is our starting area, and upon getting knocked out, the players will restart within this white box. Moving further in, we see the same bouncy spring that we saw in the waiting room, but we also see a new asset, the trap. As the name implies, when walking into the trap, we lose a heart. And if we lose all three, we're knocked out, and we're forced to restart the map. Let's jump past the trap this time, and just up ahead, we see our destination. Before we can get up there, we have to move past another type of bouncy object that has been set up to move up and down. And let's jump up and reach our destination. So let's exit play mode and go over some of the settings that helped create this world. In the top left corner, we can see the game's settings window where we can adjust things like the player gravity, the jump settings, behavior for collisions and traps, the player health count, as well as settings for the game mode upon entering the game map. Below that, we have a button that will allow us to switch between editing the game and waiting room maps. Clicking on design game map, after a prompt to save our changes, we're taking to the game map that we played through earlier. Let's switch back to the design waiting map. You also have the option to change the current map to different styles. As we switch between the different map presets, you can see the background style and various other assets start to change based on the theme. On the right side are our project level settings. The menu button brings up our settings window to exit the world, import and export design mode files so you can create backups of your worlds, the settings for various graphical sound and other miscellaneous settings, as well as the settings for user feedback. 
Going down the list, we see our social button to chat with your MapleStory World's friends during development, the save button, the eraser to delete assets in your world, the undo and redo button, and our settings for publishing the world. And finally, our map and layer settings, which we'll go into more detail in a separate video. Continuing our editor tour, we see different presets available to us in the lower third of our screen. We have three different asset groups available to creators. Devices are the functional components of our world, the things in our world that the player will be interacting and playing with. Design allows us to go beyond the simple tiles and platform and gives us design assets to make worlds more visually complex. And finally, we have our environmental props. Like design assets, they have no functional value besides to accompany your environment with fun visual props. We'll begin to play with these assets a lot more in a separate video, but first let's take a look around our preset environment and understand how some of these have been set up. Using your left mouse or middle mouse buttons, click and drag to pan the screen and center in on our mushroom house. And let's try clicking on the house. This brings up a circular edit wheel. The buttons on this will allow us to manipulate the general settings that are shared across all assets such as rotation, scale, etc. If we select the settings button, we can control the asset's activation status, visibility, and set the asset's positions, scale, and rotation values manually. There's an easier way to change these transform values though, by clicking on the orange target icon. Here we can click and drag the rotation handle to rotate the asset, and similarly, the scale handle to scale the house up and down. We can also click on the flip icon to horizontally flip our house. Going back to our main wheel, we see a layer icon, and this will allow us to manipulate the layer that the asset is on. We'll go over the layers in a separate video, but for now it's good to know that this button exists. The last two buttons are self-explanatory. We can delete the asset, and we can duplicate the asset. If we modify our rotation and scale buttons before duplicating, all of our settings will be copied over. Once we're done, let's confirm our changes by clicking on the check mark, or alternatively, by simply clicking off the asset. To finish our tour of basic mode, I want to highlight a few last things regarding testing your world. Next to the play button we pressed earlier to enter our world, there's a small avatar standing over a yellow play arrow. This is the play here button. If we click and drag the avatar around, we notice the yellow arrow follows and points to our mouse's location. If ever your level is beginning to get really complex, but you want to test a certain portion of your game without actually modifying the spawn point, you can use this feature to quickly jump to the location marked by the play here marker and start the game from there without having to modify the actual spawn point. Let's click on the play button and test this out. Awesome, the player spawned exactly where we wanted to have them spawn. Let's go over a few last items regarding testing your world. Next to the pause button, you'll notice an icon with three dots. Clicking on that will bring up three additional icons. The first icon will hide and show all the UI in the world. Next to that is our development console, which shows error messages and warnings that occur in the world. If ever something seems to be breaking while you create, Check here if you see any errors that appear, and please report the error to us using our support link. And finally, and perhaps the most important, is the multiplayer testing feature. Clicking this button will create additional game windows and allow you to test multiplayer functionality in your world. Thanks for following along with me today. Join me in the next chapter as we go into detail about utilizing the assets to make our environment look pretty.